In Star Wars Legends, the Galactic Empire's Imperial Navy consisted of many different types of cruiser, frigate and transport vessel across the huge expanse of the galaxy. Much smaller in size to the Imperial Star Destroyer classes, the Imperial Cruiser, Frigate or Corvette vessel classes were commonly utilised to either assist the vast Imperial Navy fleets, patrolling systems, escorting other Imperial ships or used to transport fighters and cargo. This video focuses specifically on the Imperial Cruiser, Frigate or Transport Vessel classes from Star Wars Legends publications, including some which went on to serve either the Dark Empire or the Imperial Remnant. In Legends, the Gazanti Cruiser and the Arquitans class Command Cruiser were not affiliated to the Galactic Empire like in canon, as seen in productions such as Star Wars Rebels and The Bad Batch. Instead, in Legends, both vessels were affiliated with the Galactic Republic. Also in Legends, the Campmore class Arrestor Cruiser was not used by the Empire, and only in canon during Andor Season 1 and seen briefly in the Rogue One movie. As there is a long list of ships, I decided to split into categories starting with the Empire's frigate classes. In the aftermath of the Battle of Yavin, the Empire were concerned with the strength of the Rebellion Starfighters and their Navy's anti-Starfighter protection. Imperial Navy Command responded arguing the first Death Star's destruction was due to that reason. A group of admirals authorised the construction for Kuat drive yards to produce the Lancer class frigate. Initial tests of the new Imperial frigate proved favourable, and its point defence laser cannons were equipped with the same targeting mechanism adapted from one used in the TIE bomber craft. It was a medium sized frigate at around 250 metres in length and could hold 850 officers and enlisted crew, as well as 40 troopers on board. Although the Lancer frigate were the best anti-starfighter ship in service during the Galactic Civil War, they were vulnerable to attack from rebel cruisers due to its lack of any turbo lasers and requirement to position the vessel on the outer perimeter of the fleet. Only a limited number were ever created. The Imperial Star Galleon was the Empire's response to a long-standing issue from pirates attacking their cargo freighters. Previous Imperial freighters had been lightly armed and unable to defend their precious cargo from starfighter attacks. The Star Galleon, manufactured by Kuat Drive Yards, could simultaneously serve as both a transport and an escort vessel, and was able to successfully defend against pirate and even rebel attacks. Holding strong shielding, 16 heavy concussion missile launchers, and 5 turbo lasers on each side of the vessel, it created a heavy perimeter defence. Even if boarded, the Star Galleon stationed 300 troopers and its interior consisted of anti-intruder defences. For example, fortress-like emplacements were lined on the inner decks, helping the crew to defend their Imperial ship. It was the second largest Imperial frigate at 300 metres and a cost of 17.5 credits to produce. However, the heavy cost was offset against previous loss of ships and cargo. As a last resort, the crew of the Star Galleon were able to jettison the cargo hold as a separate vessel into hyperspace. Imperial authorities could track and retrieve the cargo across the hyperlanes. The EF-76 Nebulon B Escort Frigate was introduced during the latter stages of the Clone Wars and became the Galactic Empire's solution to pirate and rebel attacks on the Imperial shipping lanes. The Imperial Navy used the Nebulon B extensively to defend convoys against raiders, although it is more commonly associated with the Rebel Alliance as part of their fleet formations during the Galactic Civil War. The frigate gained a favourable reputation for its anti-starfighter effectiveness for Imperial convoys and had an immediate impact, forcing the Rebels to reconsider their pilot losses from hyperspace raids. They were often used to support larger capital ships such as Imperial class Star Destroyers. The standard Nebulon B armaments consisted of 12 turbo lasers, 12 laser cannons, and two tractor beam projectors. It also carried two TIE fighter squadrons. However, the midsection was particularly vulnerable to concentrated heavy weapons fire, thus causing a hull breach. The frigate was 300 meters in length and held a crew around 900, including officers, enlisted, and gunners. Manufactured by Rendilli Star Drive for the purposes of the Imperial Customs Agency, the Imperial Customs Frigate was in service to help imports and exports that travel through Imperial space are legal and comply with Imperial laws and regulations. For a small vessel at a mere 35 metres in length, the frigate was more than capable of engaging most smuggler light freighters, small-time pirates or even enemy fighters. However, it would be no match for any class of heavy cruiser or capital ships. It possessed six heavy laser cannons mounted upon turrets, which were operated by gunners, and also on board there were six officers and enlisted crew alongside ten troopers. The largest Imperial frigate released into service from Kuat Drive Yards was the Imperial II class frigate. At a quarter of the length of an Imperial Star Destroyer at 400 metres, it was primarily used to patrol shipping lanes, engage rebels and pirate forces. 
This type of frigate held two extensive hangars on both sides of the hull. The hangars were particularly useful to accommodate flights of TIE fighters, shuttles and even detain suspicious vessels while being scrutinised. In its vessel class, the Imperial 2 class frigate also possessed the large number of officers and enlisted crew at 19,000, as well as the largest number of troopers at 4,500. They were frequently used by the Imperial Navy to assign Academy officer graduates on board as junior staff. Its shields and weaponry were impressive for a patrol vessel consisting of turbo laser batteries, ion cannons, point defence laser batteries and tractor beam batteries. The IR-3F class light frigate was a small vessel designed by Sinar Fleet Systems for the use as another type of system patrol and custom ship. At 112 metres long it was relatively powerful for its small size and used by the Empire to patrol single systems mainly within the security of the core worlds. He held a small crew of 11 including 8 gunners as well as 10 troopers on board. At a cost of 2.5 million credits it saw limited use by the Imperial Navy and these were later used extensively by the wild space world of Bakura. The next category of vessels are the Empire's small interdictor class ships. 19 years before the Battle of Yavin, a small frigate type vessel known as the Detainer CC2200 was used to prevent enemy ships of the Galactic Empire fleeing from the Wookiee world of Kashyyyk shortly after the end of the Clone Wars. Very little is known of the details of the ship other than it used gravity well projectors and would have been an early prototype for the later and much larger interdictor cruisers and star destroyers which eventually incorporated gravity well technology. In response to hit and run tactics of the Grain Rebellion against the Empire, a new interdictor class was manufactured by Sinar Fleet Systems called the Immobilizer 418 cruiser. At 600 meters in length it was a medium sized cruiser and based upon the standard Vindictor class heavy cruiser hull which had been discontinued from service. Equipped with two gravity well projectors designed to stop ships escaping and making the jump into hyperspace, it also had the ability to pull ships from hyperspace. The ship's weaponry consisted of 20 quad laser cannons making it able to adequately defend itself against smaller vessels. It held 800 officers and enlisted crew as well as 80 troopers, 24 TIE fighters and 4 shuttles on board. Although the experimental ship was in short supply, they became a valuable addition to the Imperial Navy during the Galactic Civil War. The next category of vessels are the Empire's Corvette class ships. Although there were a few other vessels which could have classed as a Corvette as well as a cruiser, the Raider class Corvette in 6 BBY was a 150 metre long vessel which supported TIE fighters when engaging rebel fleets. Typically the Raider class Corvette was small, fast and manoeuvrable, although relatively lightly armed with six twin heavy laser cannon turrets, two single turbo lasers and ion cannons. They were mostly used in the Outer Rim territories as patrol and escort vessels and were operated by a crew of 90 officers and enlisted technicians with 30 troopers on board. The next category of vessels are the Empire's cruiser class of ships. The Invincible class Dreadnought heavy cruiser was the oldest in its class to serve the Galactic Empire. These cylinder looking ships had been used by many naval forces around the galaxy for several centuries and although powerful their out of date technology made them vulnerable to smaller and faster attack ships. They were the largest class of cruiser used by the Empire and at a length of 2000 meters they were 400 meters longer than an Imperial class star destroyer. However the Invincible class's old weaponry was inferior to a star destroyer. The new Imperial class vessels would easily outgun them. For this reason their role was patrolling against pirates and smugglers and even though they were technically a warship and cheap to maintain the ships were quickly phased out by the Imperial Navy over time. Based upon the design of the Gladiator class Star Destroyer the broad class cruiser was particularly effective at attacking ships and fleets from long range positions. Introduced by Kuat drive yards into service during the early part of the Galactic Civil War their main weaponry of 1200 Diamond Baron missiles were very dangerous to close fleet formations receiving extensive damage. The Diamond Baron missile was a weapon originally used during the Clone Wars but enhanced by the Empire at the height of the Galactic Civil War. Diamond Baron missiles were very difficult to stop from Starfighter scale laser weapons and could be fired from most standard concussion missile launchers. They were equipped with powerful warheads capable of completely destroying everything within 50 meters from the point of detonation. Thus the missile proved itself an effective weapon against fighters since a single blast could easily take out several at a time. However the broad class cruiser was slow and not very maneuverable or armoured compared to most vessels. 
leaving the ship vulnerable to attack if left on its own. The Imperial Navy needed to ensure the cruiser had an adequate escort as cover. Produced a century prior to the formation of the Galactic Empire, the Dreadnought-class heavy cruiser was still a type of capital ship useful to the Imperial Navy. The Empire had planned to completely phase out these vessels, however, due to cost, fleet requirements and their numbers, the Imperial Navy opted to refit these outdated cruisers to serve their requirements. The heavy cruisers were supplementary for planet occupation and space combat, and wherever assigned by the Empire. As a result, the 600m long cruisers required less crew, increased speed, improved armaments, and a complement of 12 TIE fighters. The vessel, despite altering its reliance on a manual crew, there were 16,000 officers and enlisted, and usually 3,000 troopers on board. They were mainly used to maintain an Imperial patrol presence in the Outer Rim territories, close to more primitive worlds, but also acted as protection to Imperial convoys along the trade lanes. Since their initial existence, the Dreadnought-class heavy cruiser was universally used by many factions from all over the galaxy, including the Galactic Republic, the Rebel Alliance, the New Republic, the Huts, and many other factions. In 9 ABY, Grand Admiral Thrawn recovered 178 ships from the Lost Katana fleet, and was able to utilise them in critical skirmishes against the New Republic. Manufactured by the Damarian Manufacturing Corporation during the early period of the Galactic Empire's reign, the Tartan-class patrol cruiser was an Imperial anti-starfighter and patrol vessel, developed to engage small, fast-moving targets as a response to increased piracy. At 250 metres in length, it was a relatively small cruiser used by the Empire, but still its advanced tracking system and rapid response systems were useful to tackle piracy. However, they were very expensive at 4.2 million credits to manufacture in large volumes, and so only a small number were ever produced. That said, the Tartan class possessed lots of potential to explore the Imperial Navy with its speed and manoeuvrability capabilities, as well as its ability to redirect energy from the deflector shields to give more firepower to the weapon systems. The Tartan class was very similar to the later designed Lancer class frigate, as it was created for the game Star Wars Empire at War. With the appearance of a small Star Destroyer, the wedge-shaped Acclimator II class assault ship was first used by the Galactic Republic towards the end of the Clone Wars. The Acclimator II class was originally designed to perform orbital bombardments and thus its weaponry consisted of 24 turbo lasers, two heavy proton torpedo launchers and 100 heavy proton torpedoes. They required a crew complement of 20,000 officers and enlisted, as well as 3,200 troopers, making the cruiser the largest of the modern designs in the late to early period of the Galactic Republic to the Galactic Empire. The Empire utilised the Acclimator class to frequently defend Cardan class space stations, which acted as an orbital defence structure built near a planet or strategic point in deep space in order to provide cover against attacks from space. Another class of cruiser utilised by the Galactic Republic and later used by the Galactic Empire was the Carrick class light cruiser. The small but very able combat cruisers were heavily armed and had a top speed to rival the Rebel X-Wing fighter. At 350 metres long, the Carrick class was a useful and inexpensive class of vessel to incorporate into the Imperial fleet. They were capable of short skirmishes with larger vessels through its impressive array of weaponry including 10 heavy turbo lasers 20 ion cannons and 5 tractor beam projectors, however they would only hold an external complement of 4 starfighters. The vessel operated with a light crew of 1,100 officers and enlisted, with 142 troopers on board. Small groups of the Carrick class were assigned to systems in less important areas of Imperial space to act as patrol vessels. In open space conflicts, this type of cruiser was able to outrun most more powerful warships, as well as tough enough to break through a blockading fleet. The Neutron Star class bulk cruiser was an outdated class of capital ship very lightly used by the Galactic Empire. Originally manufactured by Rendilli Star Drive, they were designed during the Clone Wars to serve as a second line fleet ship. The Empire utilised very few of these cruisers due to a number of reasons including their slow speed, engines which consumed high amounts of fuel and expensive maintenance costs to operate. Introduced into the Imperial Navy sometime around the Battle of Yavin, the Strike-class medium cruiser had been designed by the Outer Rim's Lorinar Corporation as a cheap multi-purpose vessel capable of modular modifications to allow it to fit many mission profiles and to be produced in large quantities. 
Its long list of purposes including acting as an escort, a prefab garrison deployer, a troop transport, carrier, a planetary assault vessel and even a system garrison flagship. At 450 metres long it was a powerful supplementary fleet vessel as backup for the Victory and Imperial class Star Destroyers. With a crew of 1,972 officers and enlisted, with 140 gunners and 1,000 troopers on board, it was a popular Imperial Navy vessel due to its versatility. It could also hold a decent amount of TIE fighters and assault vehicles, including ATST walkers and ATAT walkers depending on the mission profile. Another old ship design from close to 200 years prior to the rise of the Galactic Empire, the Munifex light cruiser was a cruiser designed by Kuat Drive Yards which was quite heavily armed for its size. However, it was used sparingly by the Empire in only low priority sectors due to its slow speed and weak shields. Use only joined the splintered remnants of the Galactic Empire's exile from power in 11 ABY. The Vibrae class assault cruiser was specifically used for commerce raiding from the New Republic convoys. It was operated both by elements of the Imperial military and by pro-Imperial privateer crews. Only requiring a crew of 30, these cruisers were part of the smallest in its class at 100 metres long. However, the Vibrae class possessed impressive weaponry including multi-laser cannons and heavy ion cannons. One of the largest sized cruisers used by the Empire was the Kuat Drive Yards Pursuit class light cruiser, which despite its flat underside hull, bore a resemblance to the larger dagger-shaped Imperial class Star Destroyers. Utilised to patrol medium sectors of importance, its primary armaments consisted of two heavy laser turrets mounted towards the front of the vessel's superstructure. It housed a docking bay capable of launching several TIE fighters at a time, and in open space the cruiser's acceleration could match much smaller ships. They operated with a crew up to 2,500 officers and enlisted, including 100 troopers on board. Designed to act as an inter-system customs vessel, the Galactic Empire used the Guardian-class light cruiser remote patrolling capabilities. This well-armed cruiser vessel could easily take on freight traffic, smugglers and pirates, and usually simply destroy them rather than attempting to board. To assist in interdiction and customs, the Guardian class could be outfitted with external docking points to carry TIE fighters, however these fighters reduced its manoeuvrability. The Imperial Security Bureau used a variant of the Guardian class for its agents to conduct their missions. The Trenchant class cruiser was manufactured by Makuni Drives, but sparingly used by the Empire for patrol purposes. The High Inquisitor Mox Slosin used a modified variant of the Trenchant class cruiser called the Iron Hand for his personal transport. The Imperial patrol vessel called the IPV-1 system patrol craft was a light cruiser used for system security and customs and commonly close to planets to apprehend smugglers and protect from pirates. Produced by Senar fleet systems, it was commonly utilised by the Empire during the Galactic Civil War in sectors of low priority. Built by Tag Industry Shipyards Limited for the reborn Palpatine's Dark Empire, the modular Task Force cruiser was one of the more diverse and interesting Imperial vessels ever constructed. It was primarily a support vessel class which functioned as a generic framework on which mission function modules could be mounted and reconfigured as necessary. For example, these modules included a hospital module for space battle recovery, an espionage module for long range observation and intelligence gathering, and an inquisition module for actions against insurgents and rebellious worlds. The cruiser itself did not infiltrate enemy territory and the ship could only contain one module at a time. At a length of 1,150 metres, it could hold up to around 20,000 on board, depending on the mission function module. However, despite its usefulness, they only had light armaments and a light complement of TIE fighters compared to other cruisers of its size. The next category of vessels are the Empire's transport class ships. The Ton Falk class escort carrier, also known as Imperial Escort Carrier, was a transport ship designed to carry Imperial starfighters. To provide a solution to TIE fighters that did not possess hyperdrives, in comparison to Rebel starfighters, Imperial escort carriers were introduced during the Galactic Civil War. These starfighter carriers provided rapid deployment of TIE fighters and possessed a hangar bay which allowed minor repairs. They could carry a full fighter wing consisting of six squadrons, up to 72 TIE fighters. Due to its lack of weaponry as a capital ship, the Imperial escort carrier would fall back during battles, allowing more powerful capital ships to press the attack. The Imperial Armoured Transport was an early version produced by Kuat Drive Yards of the Imperial Star Galleon. At 50 metres long and with a crew of 10, carrying 20 troopers on board, the Imperial Armoured Transport was armed with two laser cannons, 
and occasionally three double turbo laser batteries, the ship could transport at least 30,000 metric tons, enough to hold three months consumables. Other transport ships used during the Imperial era were the Imperial Convoy Ship and the modified Acclimator Class Assault Ship, known as the Imperial Cargo Ship. The next category of vessels are a number of varied ships used during the Empire's reign. The Dungeon Ship was introduced to control and hold dangerous prisoners. Although originally designed by the Mandalorians, the majority of the vessel's cells were devoted to common prisoners. Often prisoners were held under uncomfortable conditions and various painful techniques were used to keep prisoners under control, especially during prisoner transfers. Prisoners were guarded by droids alongside troopers. These ships were 764 metres in length and held up to 9,000 prisoners, with a crew of 860, including prison guards. As a type of capital ship, the dungeon ship consisted of 10 quad turbo laser batteries, which was more than adequate to deal with most attacking forces. They were generally stationed in the Outer Rim territories alongside a small escort of Imperial vessels. Two of the smallest vessels used by the Empire at 30 metres in length were the Beta Assault Shuttle and the more powerful Gamma Class Assault Shuttle. Both ships were used for the same purpose and were designed to hold a modular hull structure featuring a front five-person command pod. The central section could be reconfigured according to mission requirements. A space trooper module, for example, could carry 40 space troopers. Its armaments were adequate to defend itself against ships of a similar or slightly larger size. However, the modular design created vulnerabilities due to structural issues. Manufactured by Sinar Fleet Systems, the Skip Ray Blast Boat was designed for a single role of attacking capital ships, specifically for hit and run attacks on enemy fleet formations. An Imperial Super Hauler was a large droid ship that followed the shipping corridors between major systems. And finally, the Imperial Levian ships were a massive 5,000 metres long and a starship factory that were the predecessor to the World Devastators. An Imperial Levian could produce several different kinds of vehicles and vessels through sophisticated foundries and assembly lines of their time. However, the primary function was to recycle material taken in by the vessel. These systems in an average hour could produce either 10 speeder bikes, 5 STSTs, 3 TIE Fighters or even a single AT-AT. The Levians were often used once the Empire had established itself on a new world. That's all for this video. For more Imperial Explained videos, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and as always, long live the Empire!